Hey guys, welcome back to the OpenDK Basics tutorial series. My name is Sil, and in this part we're going to be looking at making uh, vertex buffer objects, index buffer objects, and such, um, so we don't have to use immediate mode. Um, and this will be really useful when we actually start doing um, either models or large amounts of vertices and other data um, being passed to the uh, to the graphics card, because if we do this, you'll get exponentially increased uh, frame speeds and everything. Um, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to make uh, an array of vertices here at the top. Um, we're going to do a vector2 uh, array here and we'll do we'll call it a vertex buffer or vert buffer. Um, and then we're also going to make an int here as well um, and I'm going to call this VBO and that stands for ver vertex buffer object. Um, again this integer variable here we can make uh, like a encapsulation for it if we want. Um, I haven't found the need too much because I don't need another data at the moment, but it is kind of nice. It would be kind of nice to have um, a, a struct just to say that, hey, this is a ver vertex buffer object, not just a regular int. Um, because again, OpenGL is going to be passing us back an integer that lets us lets us tell it which vertex buffer object we want to draw once it's generated and passed data to it. Um, now we're going to go ahead and fill this uh, vertex buffer our own just. You know, Text to, or our vector2 array here, so we'll do vert buffer equals new vector2, and we'll do 4. Um, I do want to note um, in between episodes here, if I go ahead and run this, oops, what did I, okay, hold on. In between episodes, I did uh, fix our little guy here just by changing um, the texture coordinates and the positions that we draw him at. Um, so you can go ahead and just copy this here real fast. It just essentially is just drawing him from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 on the screen and uh, flipping the Y coordinates because, again, the top of the screen is positive 1 Y, which is counterintuitive for me and we'll change it later. But um, anyways, um, back here, we're going to go ahead and uncomment that again. Um, and we'll do new vector 2. And we're going to do 0, 0. Oops. Um, oh, and I did use uh, primitive type quads for that instead, so I only had to define four vertices rather than um, making two different triangles myself. It'll automatically make those two triangles for me um, just by passing it four vertices. So that's kind of nice. And we're going to do the same thing for our vertex buffer object. Um, we're going to go ahead and do new vector 2, 1, 0. Oops, not a semicolon. New vector 2, 1, 1. Man, I'm not good at typing right now. New vector 2, 0, 1. Okay, so you can make these whatever you want. Um, these are again just our vertices like we're passing down here. Um, these will be passed in order to the uh, graphics card, or will be drawn in order when we tell it to. Um, and now that we have that array initialized, we can actually start passing that over to OpenGL. And so what we want to do is we want to tell OpenGL to first generate a vertex buffer object that we can pass into. And we're going to store that in our VBO. So we're going to do VBO, that VBO integer, equals gl.genBuffer, like I accidentally typed in the last part. Um, and that'll generate that buffer and pass us back an ID for it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do gl.bindBuffer. And for the buffer target, we're going to do array buffer. Um, the two that we will be using of the buffer targets is array buffer and element buffer array. Um, the array buffer, just like is a generic, this is an array um, that we're drawing, or this is just an array that we want to pass to you of data. Um, the element buffer array is more specifically like an index buffer, um, which is what we'll be using for our index buffer. Um, other than that, I don't know what any of the others do, and I haven't ever had to use them. So if anybody knows that, um, let me know, and I'll go ahead and uh, throw that out there. But uh, anyways, for int buffer, we'll do VBO, which is that integer that it passed back to us. And now we want to actually uh, pass the data to uh, OpenGL, so we're going to do gl.bufferData. And you can do buffer data without uh, defining what type of data you're passing it, but I find it to be better to do vector2 like that, so that it knows we're passing in vector2s. Um, we're going to do buffer target dot array buffer since we bound it to the array buffer. It's going to ask for an end pointer size. I'm not sure why it wants it of the end pointer type and not like an integer, but we're going to go ahead and typecast end pointer here. Um, the size of the buffer is going to be the size of vector2 times how many, however many vector2s we have. So we're going to do vector2 dot size in bytes 
times vert buffer dot length. So it should be pretty intuitive there. It's going to ask for the data itself, so we're going to pass it the vert buffer. Um, and that actually just passes it as a reference, so that's why it works for the ref vector2 data. Um, buffer uses hint, we're going to do um, static draw. Since we are not planning on changing this more than once in our game, it's going to be static. And since we're only drawing it, we're not going to be trying to access it or do anything else with it, we're going to do draw. Um, there's a few other variables, and we'll probably, if we get into it, we'll probably be using, um, what is it, it's uh, something like... Um, dynamic draw. We'll probably be using dynamic draw a little bit later if we have like a vertex buffer object that we change every so now and then, but not every single frame. Um, the stream draw would be something that we change every single frame and then draw it, so it's very volatile. Um, and this is just kind of, as you can see, it's a buffer usage hint. It's kind of telling uh, OpenGL um, how to manage this data so that it's going to optimize it best for what we're planning on using it for. Um, so just something to note. I Generally, you can use static draw, draw and it'll work just fine. Um, but you might get a little bit less frame rates or something like that. I haven't had any problems with uh, defining the wrong one there. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and unbind the buffer by doing gl.bind buffer, buffer target .ray buffer and zero. And that's just kind of uh, saying, hey, we're not using this buffer, or we're not you know, going to do anything with this buffer at the moment, so go ahead and unbind it. Um, and now that we have it here, we can go ahead and draw it, um, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it as well along with our uh, immediate mode thing, um, just so that we can see both of them. And so we need to do a couple things here. Um, we need to bind the buffer, we need to enable um, the vertex buffer uh, type basically, um, and then we need to make a pointer so that OpenGL knows where to find each vertex. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do the enabling first, so we're going to do gl.enable, sorry, gl capital L dot enable client state and we're going to do array cap dot uh, and we're going to do vertex array. Um, this basically tells OpenGL that our vertices are going to have positions or vertices. Um, if you don't this, if you don't do this, it won't draw anything when you call uh, open or gl dot draw arrays, um, which can be quite frustrating to figure out. Um, anyways, then we need to bind the buffer, which we did before, so we'll do gl dot bind buffer, and then we'll do buffer target dot array buffer, and for then buffer we'll do VBO. And then we need to make a pointer telling OpenGL where to find um, the array buffer um, and also how to use it. Um, so we'll do GL dot vertex pointer and for the int size we'll do two with the type of float, so that means it has two floats. Um, and then for the stride, we're going to do vector two dot size and bytes times, or just do vector two dot size and bytes actually. Um, and then for the offset, we'll do zero um, for now. Basically, this is saying um, our, vertice, our vertices are uh, two floats, and you can find them with an offset for whatever vertice you're on times the vector two dot size and bytes. Um, so it's going to step through each and every one that we, t or it's going to step through however many times we tell it. Um, from a beginning from a beginning position, and it's going to step this size, which is going to be vector two right now, um, and then it's going to find the next one, which should be two floats, um, and the offset should be zero. The offset will be a little bit different when we do texture coordinates here in a second, um, and then when we do this, we can do once we got all that bound and everything, we can do eat gl dot draw arrays, and we'll do primitive type dot quads. And for the first, we'll do zero, and for the count, we'll do vert buffer dot length. And guess what? If we go ahead and run it, nothing shows up. <laughs> um, so again, this is uh, kind of just part of remembering uh, what's enabled, what's disabled, and that kind of stuff. It's actually part of our texture 2D. Um, we have blending enabled, and we have a texture 2D enabled, and we have it bound, and therefore it's draw. It, since we don't define texture 2Ds, or we don't we don't find texture coordinates in our, our, in our buffer here, um, it's just sampling from the top left or wherever the last texture coordinate uh, was defined. Um, which is actually probably the bottom right, but anyways, it's it's sampling from a from a invisible position and therefore drawing nothing to the screen. Um, so what we can do is we can just disable um, enable cap dot texture two D for our vertex buffer for now. We're drawing it here. Um, it'll be enabled through here and then it'll be disabled through here. And now if we go ahead and draw this, you'll see that we do have a white rectangle. It looks like I probably defined those in the wrong order. 
Looks like I actually had some stuff left over from what we're going to be doing in just a second. I had to record uh, this again, so um, if we go ahead and do that, change it back to what you had seen before. And now we go ahead and do that. You'll see that we got that rectangle there, and it's not textured at the moment. Um, we can change the color too, um, just like we changed the color inside these gl begin end calls here. We can get a gl, and we can change it to like red or something like that. And then if we go ahead and draw that, we'll see that that uh, red thing. But what's nice about this is it's all being done in one call. We do have to kind of say like uh, we do have to bind which buffer we want it to draw to, but this stuff is really fast and all the data is already on the graphics card and being handled and drawn a lot quicker than it would have been drawn here um, since OpenGL uh, knows when and how we want to draw it from the get-go um, so really nice um, what we can do now real fast is actually add the texture coordinates and there's a couple different ways of doing this but uh, the easiest way at the moment is to simply add the texture coordinates to our vertice buffer um, and since they're both vector 2's we can just keep it a vector 2 uh, array um, and if we just change the length to double and then we uh, add texture coordinates after every vertice here we can do new vector 2 0 0 and we do this for each vertice so these will be vertices, the next one will be texture coordinate, vertice, texture coordinate, vertice, texture so it'll alternate there and we do 1, 1, 1, 1 there we are um, and then what we do, um, instead of drawing um, buffers.length, we're going to draw buffers.length divided by 2 since there will be two, um, two objects in this array um, for one vertice since one of them should be a text coordinate. Um, and then we also need to again enable the client state for texture coordinates. This will say hey we have uh, text coordinates now as well. Um, we'll still bind just the VBO because the texture coordinates and the positions are both in the VBO. Um, and then for the, we'll do gl.texture coordinate pointer. Um, and again, the size is 2, vertex type is float. Um, for the stride, we're going to actually have to change both of these. It's going to be vector 2.size and bytes times 2, since each vertice has two vector 2s in it. Um, so this one needs to stride by that as well. And then our offset um, tells it once it finds those two, two vector 2s, um, how much of an offset should I find this particular thing at? And so, since the texture coordinate is the second one here, we're going to do vector two dot size and bytes so that we step over the vertex uh, coordinate. Um, and then, if we go ahead and run this, and we go ahead, actually, we should probably enable or stop disabling um, texture two D here, so it'll be enabled throughout the whole thing. Um, and we still have this uh, texture two D bound. If we go ahead and run this here, you can see that we got our red uh, penguin. So, pretty nice. All right. Um, so that's about it for this tutorial. Um, we're going to go ahead and start working with uh, index buffer objects in the next tutorial and maybe something else since that shouldn't take too long. Um, but thanks guys for watching. Hope to see you there. Bye.